Hi and welcome back. Today we will be analyzing our block with different information again. But this time it's not going to be the same as the two previous video. Instead, at this point, we have two different conditions in terms of state of motion. The state of motion is different from the initial to the final condition. So, let's not wait that long. Let's proceed by analyzing the problem. Here we have initially at rest, or the velocity is zero, so it's not moving. And then suddenly, a force is applied to the right and cause it to move at a positive velocity, positive v. I said positive v because it's not indicated, so we'll just make the assumption that when it's not a sign of any sign, well, not a sign of any sign, if it's not negative, then we can just make the assumption that it is positive. So it's supposed to go to the right, positive to the right, so it's moving to the right at a velocity v, from zero to v. Now, by looking at this condition, we all know right away we can make a conclusion that velocity at this case is non-constant or NC. NC stands for non-constant as I'm writing it here because I don't want to write the whole thing saying it's non-constant. At this point, you were given the coefficient of kinetic friction and static friction. So we have both kinetic friction and, kin and static friction coefficient. Now, which of the two should we be using? Since we start from no motion to suddenly it's moving, of course, there is definitely motion because there is a change. I'm sorry, there's a change in motion. So there is an acceleration. So we will be using the kinetic friction or the coefficient of kinetic friction in our problem, in our scenario over here. So, allow me to use the same color pen as I've been using in the previous uh, video to analyze our acceleration. Okay, so for our acceleration, we all know that there's no motion going up and down. As indicated here, all of its motion is only going from left to right. So, left to right. So initial, it's going, it's not moving, and then suddenly it's moving positive velocity to the right. And plus the question indicates it's going to be on the x-axis. In some cases, they might show up saying that in your problem, it's v naught, which is your initial velocity along the x-axis is zero. And the final velocity, v sub x along the x-axis is v then they might add something where it says the velocity or v naught along your y-axis is equivalent to zero okay and the final velocity along your y-axis is also zero so this means there is a change in the state of motion along the x-axis but there is no change in state of motion along the y-axis so it's not moving up or down or it's not changing motion up or down not changing any position along the x or along the y-axis so again before we answer this question or analyze the acceleration let's just put our x and y coordinates as always so this is my y-axis this is my x-axis so x and y again let's analyze our y-axis first and then our x-axis. Now, if we compare this, velocity, non-constant is for the top one. If we have our y-axis zero and still zero, there's no change in the state of motion. So definitely we will make the assumption or it's safe to say that the acceleration for the y-axis is simply zero because there's no change in the state of motion. For the x-axis, definitely there is from 0 to v. So we can say there is an acceleration. Then I will say that will be our a. Okay, a. Now by looking at the condition 0 to v. So there is an increase. So there is an increase. So therefore we can say that the acceleration is positive and it's not negative. 
So it's a positive acceleration, so it's not decreasing in terms of speed, but increasing in speed. So that's why we have what we call a positive acceleration. So now, how could that be possible? Because the first question is, what is the acceleration? So we have to figure out the value of A. And when we're solving this question, this, this uh, problem or solving this condition, we should come up with an acceleration that is equivalent to positive and not negative by just looking at those two given information. Again, we will also solve for the force, applied force, in order to uh, cause a state that is a change, a state, a change in the state of motion, change in the state of motion from at rest or not moving from motionless to suddenly moving at a velocity of v towards the right. So, let us move on with our free body diagram. So again, if this is a free body diagram, and then this is my dot, so let's draw and transfer this information. Again, we are not supposed to draw any components. We just need to draw the arrows to represent the actual forces acting on the body. So if we put our dot right here, given that you have mass and its matter, so there should be an arrow going down to represent the weight or force of gravity. What is opposing it on the surface of a table? As it is opposing the gravity, okay, on the surface of the table, that will be our normal force. And that normal force should be equal because our y acceleration along the y-axis is zero. It means you have the same amount of force so that it will not disturb the state of motion. Okay, so it will not disturb the state of motion. So it should be a little bit, or it should be the same as the force of gravity, or else if there's a change or there's a difference in forces, the magnitude of forces, it will cause the object to move along that axis. Okay, again, it's going to cause a change in motion along that axis. Now, so the, nor the force that is applied is going to the right, let's say about this long three going to the right, F. And since it, there is an acceleration and it's positive, so it means that forces, all of the forces going to the right should be greater than the forces going to the left because that's how it works, okay? So negative it will be negative if this force is greater than the right force. And there's only one force acting on the negative direction, and that is the force of friction. We can assume that it is the force of friction in this case because we were given the coefficient of friction. We have both the kinetic and static friction coefficient. So we can say that this is our force of friction, Force of friction, since it is moving, there is change in, uh, in, in velocity, there is even an acceleration, so it's safe to say that this is kinetic friction K. Force of friction, kinetic. So these are all the forces that we have. There's no other forces as we have mentioned earlier. So still the same step. We have force of gravity is simply mass multiplied by g. It's either the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength on which planet you are. Second, we must place our force of friction. And of course, force of, force of friction, it's either kinetic or static. Let's use the generic equation, which is mu fn. So we just need to put the subscript k if it's moving as it is kinetic friction. Okay, now this will be the first step. As always, we have to take the forces, analyze the forces acting along the y-axis. The forces acting on the y-axis can be written as the sum of all forces acting along the y-axis is equivalent to the mass of the object that is being analyzed multiplied by the acceleration in the same axis, y. And by looking at our given analysis earlier, there is no acceleration, so the state of motion along the y-axis is still the same. 
there are no changes so we just have to analyze the force that's going upward that is fn minus the force of gravity going down is equivalent to mass multiplied by zero so that's fn minus fg equals zero okay and now we all know since they're not move there's no change in the state of motion along the y-axis we can safely assume we can safely say that the normal force is equivalent to the force of gravity or the weight of the object so fn equals fg but we all know that fg is mg and that is fn is simply equivalent to mass times your g it's either acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength now this time okay this time let's analyze the forces acting along the y-axis okay or the x-axis now let's analyze the forces acting on the x-axis so this time allow me to use a different color pen why don't we use the purple one so we can see uh, comparison wise I think it's better to use the red one so you can see the difference between our blue from the x from the y-axis to the x-axis so now let's analyze the summation of forces or all the forces acting along the x-axis is simply equivalent to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration along the x-axis by the way this one the net force is equivalent to mass times the acceleration is basically Newton's second law of motion and if it is zero it explains and justify what we call Newton's first law of motion that if it's balanced it will keep on uh, it will keep on doing the way it is doing or I would say it's states of motion so if it's not moving it's not going to move anymore if it's moving it will not stop from moving and it will continue to move at the same direction the same rate so summation of forces along the x-axis equals mass times acceleration this time the acceleration along the x-axis is not zero but we will use the um, letter a and it's positive for us to make those uh, analysis so we have the force going to the right minus the force of kinetic friction is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration positive okay the acceleration positive now we want to figure out the acceleration so all we have to do is divide both sides of this equation by the uh, mass so now we have acceleration is simply equivalent to F which is our force applied force minus the force of friction kinetic friction to be exact divided by the mass but we also know that force of friction can be changed into can be changed into mu k times fn over m or again what is fn that is simply equivalent to m times g so our acceleration is simply equivalent to f minus mu k mass times g over m or this could be something that you can just leave it as is or if you still want to simplify this you can say that f over m is equivalent to of f over m minus mu k times g over m well we have to remove this one now so it's just supposed to be mu k that's it mu k times g okay there's no more line over here so let me just rewrite it to make it clear to everyone okay so let's just remove this i was writing it i got so excited so here we go so that's f over m minus mu k 
times the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength, G. So this will be our answer to question letter A. So A for A, acceleration. Now, how about if I want to use, I want to solve for my K or for my force, F. So let's continue to solve for letter B, okay? So using this original equation we have earlier, okay? So using where, where we started, right here. So we always start where we started, okay, force. That includes F, okay? So now let's take this. Now let me use a different color. So let's take this one, which is F minus force of friction or kinetic friction equals mass times acceleration. So this is where it came from. So now, now all I have to do is bring this negative to the other side of the equation because I want my F to be one in one side of the equation. So that will give me M A plus the force of friction. Okay, so that's the force of kinetic friction. Plugging in the equivalent condition, or what is your coefficient of friction, that will give us Ma plus our, co our coefficient of kinetic friction times Fn. But since we all know that Fn is mg, so we can further say that m multiplied by the acceleration along the x-axis plus mu or the coefficient of kinetic friction, the mass and the acceleration due to gravity or, or the gravitational field strength. You can just stop over here if you want or you can simplify it further by factoring out common terms which is your m so that's a plus mu k times your g. So this will be your answer for letter B. So again, now our equations are getting a little bit more interesting and some of the way we're solving these problems are a little bit more interesting now. Um, see you in the next video as there will be some additional changes and hope you enjoy this video. If you are interested, please do subscribe so that you can and follow and press so that you can, um, if you are updated of any changes or any new um, videos, any problems that we're solving, you are updated. So see you in the next video.